Workplace bias is not really a new topic. It's been around a long time. Uh, I started looking at, at it with a group of people from OSHA, uh, I think back in 1990. Uh, and healthcare, even back then, was pointed out to be one of the major areas in which injuries, both non-fatal and fatal, were happening in the workplace. But it, take, it took this amount of time, 2012, for it to mature into an area where, it, where, it become, where it's become important. It's not that it wasn't important before, but a lot of times you had a tendency of saying it was a criminal issue, there's nothing you can do with it, and it's part of your job. So we've changed our, our dynamics to saying that there is something that employers can do, should do, and in OSHA's cases, uh, as of 2011, is saying that, that if you're in certain industries, you could be held accountable for injuries that happen to your employees. We already know that uh, many of the workplace violence uh, incidents that, that have happened do happen in outstate Minnesota. Outstate Minnesota is not the mecca of peace and tranquility that we thought it was, but they run into things such as gang problems, they run into problems with meth problems, and some of the problems, maybe not in the magnitude, of a metropolitan area, but they are running into problems. Uh, and without the resources and uh, knowledge base and education that is available to the metropolitan, it does put them in an isolated uh, situation. The second myth that we want to eliminate today is that it can't be prevented. We already know that there's best practices. OSHA is not going to cite you on something that is just random is looking for the things that are, are recognizable, is looking for things that are um, uh, best practices, and that other companies or industries, such as in healthcare, have already, already developed to try to prevent uh, workplace violence from happening. I know years ago I used to interview some of the security guys in, in the places, and I said, well, what would you do if this situation happens? They said, run. I mean, they make it eight dollars an hour, and they're not going to throw their body on a on a landmine, you know. So you got to really think uh, seriously that uh, most people are not going to come in as Superman or Superwoman to save the day. You got to start thinking of a concept of what we're going to do as a team or as an entity to to protect yourself. So, how prevalent is workplace violence? It's the fourth leading cause of fatal occupational injuries in the United States, and the leading cause of injury or leading cause of death for women and usually it's because of spousal or domestic violence. According to the uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics of Fatal Occupational Injuries, there was 506 workplace homicides in 2010. Now this is important because when OSHA starts looking at what industries that they want to address workplace violence, healthcare is going to be one of the top of the line. Healthcare, social services, also late night retails, taxi and bus drivers, and teachers. But realistically, uh, for Fed OSHAs, they don't cover federal uh, or state or public employees in most cases. The state plans does. Now, Minnesota does cover state plans. But for the most part, health care is going to be one of the top areas that they're going to look at to see if you are providing uh, adequate care for your employees. When we talk about violence, it is defined by location. You define what culture your, your uh, workplace is acceptable as far as violence, not so much um, for um, emergency response, but what do you accept as okay? I mean, if you're allowing bullying, if you're allowing um, uh, disrespectful behavior, if you're allowing harassment, and you may not be allowing it, but you might not have no mechanisms for reporting, then it opens up an opportunity uh, for people to cross that line. So you have to have the foundational pieces in place, and you have to have a clear definition of what workplace violence is. It includes all of these things, but it also includes being followed, sworn, or shouted at, not by OSHA's definition, but we have to understand that workplace violence does affect not only just physical, but emotional and psychological. And you're going to get early burnout, you're going to get people who don't want to work in that situation. We have places where people are choked beaten, stabbed, and they have to go right back again to work with that same uh, client. And there's no provisions made for their mental or emotional health. And when we talk about um, things that you can put physically or engineer um, techniques, we do have 
a workplace safety grant program that covers safety, security, uh, for the protection of your employees. So things such as quick mechanism for communication, things such as locks, uh, things such as trainings could come under that um, safety grant program. It's not a hard program because I used to be the safety grant manager uh, two years ago. And so you don't need a grant manager to write for this grant, but it's something that you should look onto our website to see if it's something that you could use. There's four different types of violence that, that OSHA looks at. Violence by strangers, which is more of a criminal type of violence, violence by customer or clients, violence by coworkers, and violence by personal relationships. Uh, all these are things that could happen in the workplace and a, and a uh, employer should have a policy or procedure or program that address all these things. But they're not, OSHA is not going to cite violence by uh, coworkers or violence by personal relationship at this time. They're only looking at the client uh, or customer relationships and those that happen by stranger as recognizable hazards. On the website there will be a more complete breakdown of what each management commitment, employee involvement, hazard assessment, and hazard prevention and control. But these are the tenets of, of any workplace violence and some of you recognize them because they're the same tenets that you use for safe patient handling. But these are the tenets that they're going to look at say, is the management aware or concerned about the hazard? Are they paying attention to the reports? Are the employees involved? Have they been surveyed? Uh, do they know how to report? Is there a reporting system? Uh, have you done a hazard assessment of your workplace? Uh, have you even done anything to prevent and control? It's not good enough to say we train someone on how to use a technique and they're 110 pounds and they work with people who are 200 and 300 pounds and then she's, or he or she is by themselves. You have to use, uh, it, you have to use something that is feasibly um, trying to make a difference. So after a year or two, if you're still getting racking up injuries, you're still racking up um, complaints, then it's time to think of, about doing something differently. Uh, it, training and instructing your, your uh, employees, they should know what their, your communication is, they should know what your emergency response is, they should know how to handle a patient that's out of control. Uh, it, it's hard to try to, to, to uh, control someone if you had no training whatsoever on the proper method of, of controlling that person without injuring yourself or the person. Uh, reporting procedures, record keeping, and then doing the evaluation at least once a year to find out is it effective, is it making a change, and has there been any um, difference from last year to this year.